Welcome to Perfectly Paired With. This is a podcast where we tell true crime stories and uh, a various of true crime stories, not just uh, murders and, um, you know, missing people. We also dig into some conspiracy. And um, yeah, my wife here, Katie, she tells me, Jason, I'm Jason, uh, a story that um, I haven't heard before. Sometimes uh, I have, if it, generally if it's like a Colorado one. Uh, but uh, we do pair these stories with a drink, and we enjoy these drinks while she's telling us all the details, which is a lot of fun for us and uh, hopefully for you. Katie, what are we talking about today? At around 1.48 a.m. on the morning of August 13th, 2018, a pregnant Shanann Watts returned home from a business trip to Arizona. Upon entering her home, she kicked off her flip-flops, leaving them by the front door next to her luggage. She had no idea that as she walked up the stairs toward the master bedroom, she was walking towards not only her death and the subsequent death of her unborn son, but also a series of events leading to the deaths of her two young daughters, who at the moment Shanann crawled into bed, exhausted after a long day of travel delays, were sound asleep, having gone to bed the night before, excited to wake the next morning and see their mom. The video of Shanann approaching her front door, which was recorded on the family ring camera, would be the last footage of her alive. This for a woman who spent the previous few years recording and posting videos of herself multiple times a day would seem hauntingly ironic. It would be only a few days of Shanann and the girls being missing before Chris Watts, Shanann's husband and the father of all three children, was charged with the murders of his family. This resolution brought more attention to a case that had already captivated the entire country. This story has been told numerous times, in multiple books, in documentaries, and on many podcasts, each time trying to tell a story while searching for an answer to the question, why? Why would a seemingly perfect father and husband annihilate his entire family when, from the outside, everything appeared so idyllic? Well, I have my own theory, and my theory reminds me of a famous line in an Eminem song, which goes... Maybe that's what happens when a tornado meets a volcano. But for this true crime tale, the line would have to be written. Maybe that's what happens when a covert narcissist meets and marries an overt narcissist. A tornado meets a volcano. Yeah. You get tornado lava. <laughs> <laughs> really bad Creating science fiction movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, like sh Sharknado. Yeah, exactly. Lava Nado. Um, all right, I'm. I've been excited for this one. I obviously remember when this happened. This basically happened in our backyard. Um, it is not far from us, and mm -hmm. we know the area very well. Um, I had the uh, just happen chance. Yeah, happenstance <laughs> of um. Uh, showing a home in the neighborhood and I had a feeling it was in this neighborhood because I've looked at it on a map. I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's around here. I look it up while we're in the home. It's literally next door to what happened. We're actually going to talk about something that occurred in the house that you showed the day after, I guess the day of really this family being. Oh murdered. yes. Yeah. Right. Right. Yep. Um, yeah, so that house is creepy after you know what has happened there um, at the time, and I'm sure it is now, but uh, it was pretty much boarded up, you know, sheriff no, on the front, and you could tell it had just been sitting there for a bit. No care. And it's funny what happens to houses when nobody cares for them. Nobody lives in them. I don't even know if you have to care that much for the yeah. house. There is something about people living in a house that – gives it a different energy, a different look. Um, but this one obviously was also not being taken care of. So yeah, a little creepy. But um, I think to pair that story uh, with a, a drink, you got to go with something around there. Uh, there's a lot of breweries 
in that around that area uh, because it's so close to Longmont. It's actually like on the border of Longmont. That's how far Longmont comes out. And uh, Longmont's filled with wonderful breweries. Uh, this one that I decided to go with, we've actually been to. Um, and it is pretty much in its backyard, mm-hmm. um, just miles away from it. And it's called Wibby Brewing. And they have a holiday special, a month special called Pumpkin King. And I thought that was uh, appropriate given um, such a gruesome tale of mm-hmm. what happened to these girls. And Halloween being this month. And it just so happens to be a full moon tonight, uh, the Hunter Moon, which I saw earlier, and it's gigantic and beautiful. But uh, I just thought uh, Pumpkin King would be perfect. So, and you like pumpkin beers? I so do. I finally, I'm picking. Something I do enjoy pumpkin beer wise. That you depending like. on the pumpkin beer. Yeah. So I have to warn Wibby Brewing ahead of time. I'm pretty particular, and I'm not shy. Yeah, pumpkin beers are. Some are good. Some are not. Yeah. Some are very o- just okay average. That's a pretty good pumpkin beer. My concern yeah. with pumpkin beers is that they go too sweet, and then it's almost a sickly flavor. This is spiced, and it's not too sweet. So, uh, after I don't hate know, it. Just the initial responses to it, I I would say it's almost the perfect balance of the amount of pumpkin you want in there yeah. with the spice uh, without going overboard. But also, I got to take another drink. Um, if you go under, like there's not enough mm-hmm. pumpkin. It's almost like watered down pumpkin beer. It, it, there's just something off about it. That's just, it's not, not how enjoyable. I want my pumpkin pie to taste. But I imagine this is how a very healthy baked pumpkin pie would taste. Hmm. Like not overtly sweet, definitely yeah. pumpkin, definitely spicy. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very natural. I don't hate it. No, I, I like it. It's pretty good. Not I definitely too have, have a few of these. Yeah. Well, this is a really long story, so you might. <laughs> now, a pumpkin beer from a brewery in Frederick, Colorado, is perfectly paired with a story that on the surface is creepy, and as you get deeper and deeper and deeper into it, it gets even more creepy, which definitely matches the theme of Halloween. So there are three types of narcissists, covert, overt, and malignant. In my opinion, Chris Watts was a covert narcissist, meaning he was self-conscious, socially insecure, and introverted. His narcissistic actions were more subtle. And although not shown in any obvious way until the end, Chris proved to be self-absorbed and even for the people who should have meant the most and been the most important to him, he lacked any empathy. Shanann, on the other hand, was an overt narcissist. She had an inflated sense of self-importance, believing herself to be superior to others, especially her husband and his family. She had a constant need for praise and admiration, which she found online for her exaggerated and boasted about accomplishments as a sales representative. And like other overt narcissists, Shanann was overly focused on status and wealth, despite her financial situation being less than conducive to the life she wanted to live. And in the end, this combination would prove deadly. Now, at no point am I indicating or saying that Shanann's actions or personality traits make her deserving of the atrocious things that happened to her. Nor do I say she should share in any of the blame for the choices that Chris Watts made. But if we want to understand a crime that seems beyond explanation, we have to honestly consider the people involved for who they really were. Otherwise, we are coming to conclusions working with faulty premises. So, Shanann Rusick was born on January 10th, 1984 in Passaic, New Jersey to Frank and Sandy Rusick. Later, her parents would add a son, giving Shanann a little brother named Frankie. As a child, Shanann was described as sickly, constantly needing to be seen by various doctors. And according to her, as an elementary school student, she was constantly bullied. Once in high school, Shanann found her place in her school's theater program. 
Shanann was not an actor, but rather she successfully took on the responsibility of organizing everything behind the scenes. It was in this theater group that Shanann found a confidant in her drama teacher. She would tell a Mr. Matt Francis that her parents were going through an awful divorce at home and that her dad was never really there for her. And on top of that, he was completely unwilling to show her attention. The only problem with that is that Shanann's parents, up through the day she was killed, remained happily married. There was never a terrible divorce in the works. Begging the question, what kind of person lies about such an ordeal for the sake of attention? Now, Shanann's first marriage would be to a man named Leonard King. The couple married in 2002. King then joined the military in the hopes that he would eventually be able to attend law school. Shanann would ultimately drop out of college in order to fund their lives. To do this, she found a job selling pagers. Huh. <laughs> I don't know if we need to explain what a pager is. I feel like some listener maybe has heard <laughs> of it and didn't know exactly what it was. Back in the day, yes. before cell phones, well, there were cell phones, but... Um, and before everybody had cell phones, they had these things called pagers. And you could page somebody. <sighs> you called the pager. <laughs> and you put you your could, phone number in. Yep. Yeah, you could also like input a message through numbers if you got creative. And the pager, you know, it would, would communicate to this person. Yeah. So if I you were paged you, to them. you could pick it up and it would say like, I don't know. 911. Yeah, it'll yes. be like, call me right away. And then you would go find a payphone. I wanted one and my dad wouldn't let me because he said, you're not a drug dealer. You don't need a pager. <laughs> now, by 2006, Shanann was a manager of a cell phone store called the Dirty South. She would tell her friends and family that she had to quit college to take care of her husband while he attended law school. But despite the burden of financially providing for her husband, Shanann was able to purchase and drive a custom-fitted Escalade. This early marriage wouldn't last long. Eventually, after working a long day managing the Dirty South, Shanann just stopped going home after work, and the couple divorced in 2007. After her divorce, Shanann enrolled in school once again in Charlotte, North Carolina, but I am assuming she never graduated because I couldn't find any record of it. I also couldn't find any information as to why she stopped attending that second time. While living in Charlotte, Shanann, at the age of 25, signed a $309,000 mortgage to build a 4,000-square-foot home with lake views just for her. Then in 2010, Shanann began struggling with significant health issues. She gained weight and was constantly fatigued. After visiting several doctors, Shanann was diagnosed with lupus and fibromyalgia in May of that year. Dang. Now, lupus is an autoimmune disorder, and with that diagnosis, Shanann was told that she likely would never even be able to have children. Shanann also had to step down from her position as a store manager to, to all of her health challenges. But it was that diagnosis that led Shanann to meeting the man who would become her second husband, Chris Watts. Now, Christopher Lee Watts was born in Fayetteville, North Carolina, on May 16, 1985, to Ronnie and Cindy Watts, making Jamie an older sister at the age of six. While Chris shined in the athletic realm, he was much more average in terms of academics, despite having a photographic memory and what would later be reported as an IQ of 140. As a high school student, Chris was described as being withdrawn and uncomfortable. It was in auto tech classes that Chris found a place where he could excel. There, with his braces and a bowl cut, Chris, a NASCAR enthusiast, found a home. After high school, Chris received a $1,000 scholarship to attend the NASCAR Technical Institute. Then, after graduating with honors in 2006, Chris secured an interview to work with NASCAR. But that single interview would be the extent of Chris's connection with the racing organization. Ultimately, Chris would begin working at a Ford dealership. Shanann and Chris would meet in 2010. And here is Shanann telling the story about their first connection. Um, I had that to show for it, you know? Um... And then I met Chris. My health challenges happened. Um, I was diagnosed with some um, 
health challenges. And then I met Chris. I met Chris because of those health challenges. Um, my friend sent me a friend suggestion for him. It was actually his cousin's wife. And um, I deleted it. I was like, I'm not interested. I don't want to meet a guy. Uh, bye bye. <laughs> so I deleted her friend suggestion for him. I was diagnosed uh, two months later. And I went through one of the, I would say, darkest times of my life because things just got scarier, um, worse. Um, I thought my life was crumbling underneath me and I didn't know uh, which way to turn. And I got a friend suggestion, friend request from Chris. <laughs> I was in a really, really, really bad place. And I got a friend, su- friend request from Chris on Facebook. And I was like, ah, oh, what the heck? I'm never going to meet him. Except... A one thing led to another, and eight years later, we have two kids. We live in Colorado, and he's the best thing that has ever happened to me. And well, that's uh, some irony. Best thing to ever happen to her. I beg to differ. Yeah, <laughs> the world would beg to differ. Now, the couple's first in-person date was to a dinner theater, much more in line with Shanann style. On the next date, the couple attended a Kid Rock concert, which matched Chris more. By November of 2010, the couple had moved in together, living in Shanann's newly constructed home. Each of Chris's paychecks would be given to Shanann, and she would make all the financial decisions. The Watts and the Rusiks would meet each other for the first time at a cookout hosted by the couple, and immediately there seemed to be trouble between Shanann and Chris's mom. Chris's mom seemed to distrust and question how Shanann could afford such an affluent lifestyle, especially considering at that point she was only supporting herself working part-time at the Dirty South and with a photography business that she had started. Despite the tension between the families, Chris would propose to Shanann on the beach, and the engaged couple took a trip to Colorado for Thanksgiving to spend time with one of Shanann's friends. It was after this trip that Shanann and Chris decided that they would move to Colorado in hopes that our arid climate would be more forgiving on Shanann's lupus symptoms. The decision to move to Colorado contributed to the issues with Chris's parents, and the divide just continued to grow from there. The couple asked Chris's sister, Jamie, to be responsible for the food at their engagement party. They gave her specific instructions that the food would need to be gluten-free for Shanann. But when Shanann saw the assortment of food prepared for the party, she angrily proclaimed that she couldn't eat any of it because none of it was gluten-free. Now, I don't know if the food was or was not gluten-free, but I do know that Chris's sister, Jamie, claims that it was all gluten-free. But despite that, after the party, Chris broke off all contact with his family. And I cannot see a world in which he would do that if it wasn't at Shanann's request. Yeah, definitely. Um. Well, especially what what year is this that they're moving to Colorado? Or they are in Colorado when the gluten free thing happens, right? They are. What what year is that? Or around kind of two thousand eleven ish. Oh, geez, twenty ten. Colorado's been able to like accommodate for gluten free. <laughs> Since like the early 2000s, if not before that. Now, I think Um, the party is actually probably out east. That's what I'm wondering. And, uh, you know, even so, at 2011, everybody's got gluten-free on their minds. You know, it's not a new thing at that point. And um, But I also... And maybe it is. I don't know. But at the same time, it's not that hard to go gluten-free. I also can't imagine treating my future sister-in-law like that at all. Like, okay, you messed up. You didn't give me gluten-free food. I'm going to be okay because I'm a grown-up, and I'm just super happy to be engaged to your brother. Sure. I'm not going to lose my mind and then make my husband stop talking to sure. you. Yeah, give her like, the benefit of the doubt and the food isn't gluten-free, but at the same time, guarantee you, when I made certainly the claim, not 100% yes. of it was not gluten-free. And to me, that's like, you're dealing with somebody that's... Uh, and again, I'm not crazy. trying to put any blame on Shanann. I think the world goes out of their way to make sure victims don't get blamed. 
However, if I'm going to make the claim that this woman was a narcissist and that contributed to the atrocious thing this man is going to do to her and her children, I'm going to point out why I think she was a narcissist. And that notion of that happening even slightly the way it's been told screams narcissism to me. Yeah, narcissism and also just a little little psychotic. Now, Shanann and Chris would wed on November 3rd, 2012 at the Doubletree Hilton Hotel back in North Carolina. Shanann's wedding ring cost $10,000 and the couple enjoyed a Pittsburgh Steelers inspired wedding cake. <laughs> Not that that has anything to do with Shanann's need for fancy things. We're just football people. So yeah. their wedding cake was Steelers themed. I mean, that's kind of cool to go with the f- football thing. Yes. Um, but Ten thousand dollars. Yes. Whoa. Chris's family did not attend, nor were they welcome at the wedding. What? The only member of his family to go was his grandma. Holy crap! Is he uh, an only child? No, he has a sister, Jamie, who messed oh, yeah. up the it's anniversary done. dinner Jeez, we just <laughs> or the engagement that. dinner. Wow. Yes. That's uh. That's strange. Now, the newly married couple returned to Colorado to settle and build their life in Frederick, which is a smaller suburb nearly 30 miles north of Denver. There, Chris was able to qualify for a mortgage on a two-story, five-bedroom home located at 2825 Saratoga Trail. The mortgage payment on that home was $2,800 a month, which I mention because finances will prove to be a stressor later on in their marriage. So just keep that in mind. Um, just out of curiosity, because it's going to, I think it's going to weigh on me, but uh, do we ever touch on how she was able to afford the new build back where they first moved in? She says well, she Any of the mom's concerns off. of how she's able to afford all this? We don't. I do think, I think she actually was managing two of those cell phone stores. I think she probably had a relatively decent income. I think she probably bit off a lot more than she could chew. But again, she wants to present a certain lifestyle. So she was just going to make that choice. Okay. And I also want to say that I think narcissism is a like a, like a scale, right? I would say most people have some narcissistic tendencies and this like, drive to be the best version of yourself and succeed is a sign of narcissism, but it isn't necessarily a bad trait. And so I think part of hers was a drive to succeed. She really wanted to be a certain version of herself. Sure. And the actual like bad traits of narcissism, which I agree, I think actually most people have a bit of narcissism in them. Well, I don't know. some certainly seem to lack it, but, um, what we would think of as narcissism, the the negative things to it, and why we name it, um, it can be somewhat ebb and flowing. You yeah. know, like you're not like constantly like on yes that plane and making everybody miserable around you because you just think you are the shit and you know yeah. everything, but it can tend to come out mm-hmm. a little more often than you know, someone that's just normal and you're just like, oh, that was weird. Yeah. It's, yeah, you get more more times that after you are murdered, people are like, oh, I remember this, this, and that. Yes. Now in Colorado, Chris found a job working at a Ford dealership and Shanann worked at a pediatric call center in Aurora, Colorado. Pretty soon, the couple discovered they were expecting their first child, and it was that pregnancy that actually served as a catalyst for Shanann and Chris to reconnect with the Watts family. So for a time, after letting them know Shanann was pregnant, there seemed to be some actual familial relationships going on between Shanann and Chris and Chris's parents. Hmm. Shanann and Chris welcomed their first child, a daughter named Bella, on December 17th, 2013. Bella became a big sister in July of 2015 when Celeste, another daughter, whom the family would call Cece, was born. 
But despite the reconciliation with Chris's family and the births of Bella and Celeste, life was not as perfect as it seemed for the young family. Shanann's friends would describe her as bossy. Even Shanann would almost proudly admit that she was the dominant one in the relationship, while Chris played the more submissive role. Shanann really liked things done a certain way, and considering her OCD and the fact that she expected Chris to do all of the cleaning, Chris often appeared to others as totally subservient, incapable of standing up to his wife. For example, there was one time when a friend asked Chris for a ride to the airport, and nearly making him late for his plane, Shanann insisted that Chris finish cleaning their home before he was allowed to leave. What the... Now, this tension caused by the power disparity in the relationship was only compounded by the Watts financial situation. In August of 2015, the couple filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy to address their $450,000 worth of debt. At the time, the couple was making a combined $4,910 a month, which should have been enough if the family was willing to budget appropriately. But Shanann had certain expectations for her standard of living, And desire to live a life well above their means. How much debt was that again? $450,000. Now, there were some medical bills, I think almost $100,000, between $70,000 and $100,000. Shanann had had neck surgery. Um, There was some like college loans, and there was just a crap ton of credit card debt. That is still just with well when the it, amount they make, like you, I wouldn't you to just unless she went through uh, cancer treatment or something, mm-hmm. you know, for years and years and I years. It was decades. an elected surgery for seventy thousand. Don't understand how do you get to almost five uh, half a million? I don't in know. Debt? I don't know. And when asked about it, Shanann's response was, well, things just seem to have gotten away from us. Chris, on the other hand, was completely blindsided. Like, he had absolutely no idea that this was the financial situation they were in. Did she bring, or do you have any idea if she brought a lot of that with her into the I, That is a really good question. I have no idea. I bet she did. Well, I actually can speak to the sale of her home back in North Carolina. Yeah. When she sold that home, she actually profited around $40,000. So I don't know. Homegirl like to spend. Uh, but even so, like people stop giving you money <laughs> at a certain point. I <laughs> I don't know. Uh, okay. Now, Chris, I want to know her tricks. Like, <laughs> they stop me rotating at, at credit cards at a certain I time know. at a at a lot, much less. <laughs> than that. Now, Chris would eventually change careers due to carpal tunnel syndrome, which he developed working on car engines, ultimately joining Anadarko, which is an oil and natural gas production company, and he worked as an oil field operator. Shanann, too, would find a new way to make money. In January of 2016, Shanann began as a sales representative for Thrive. Now, Lavelle... A $1 billion a year direct sales company offered Thrive products, which were to be sold through individuals. These Thrive products included patches, shakes, vitamins, and bars that were to provide nutritional support, as well as help with weight loss management to its consumers. Patches, huh? Patches. That's a weird one. In the end, Chris was wearing two of their strongest patches and... It affected him. What? Significantly. I just don't hear of anybody wearing patches for nutritional value anymore nowadays. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's, I just don't. I have. I don't seen click on the right ads in Instagram for them to pop up. Now, Shanann became one of these Thrive sales representatives. And it was this decision that I believe set everything connected to the Watts family murders into motion. A part of Shanann's approach to not only finding people to buy the Thrive products, but also finding other people willing to sell Thrive products beneath her in an almost pyramid scheme-like business model, Shanann created a prominent presence on social media, primarily using the Facebook platform. I mean, it is a pyramid scheme. It is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
you look at how it works. I don't the... want to get sued. <laughs> <laughs> just you know, when you just look at the whatever, picture, whatever of the structure, whatever way they it show looks the... like a pyramid. Yeah. Michael Scott could draw it for us on a whiteboard no, if whatever, we need. Whatever way they show the funnel, just tip it so that it makes yes. the pyramid, and you'll see it. Now, the transformation from Shanann's first Thrive-inspired video to her later ones is pretty dramatic. Her first video shows an uncomfortable, self-conscious, but brutally honest and vulnerable mom clearly trying something new and outside her comfort zone. But her later videos showcase a confident woman who seems to thrive, no pun intended, on the attention (laughs) garnered and the false sense of importance she truly felt that came from a world in which you, through a camera, can present the exact person you want to a world of people who adore and support you. Like this. And I'm going to be honest. I didn't really like Shanann until I started watching her videos. And at least the person she presented was very endearing. I was endeared towards her online personality like it very much felt like this woman who thought her life should be more Hmm. and then she found a way to make it feel like her life was more and she just embraced it was her life ever actually more she had a custom fitted escalade and a significant home in North Carolina and Oh, so you're You know talking, what I mean? I think she's talking about she, the first video. Just her progression. She started out clunky and uncomfortable and you watch it and you're like, ugh. But and then she found herself. This isn't for Thrive that this she's is all, for Thrive. But I thought she started Thrive when she was in Colorado. Yes, we're in Colorado now. Yeah, but you said she had the whole and the Escalade and all that yes. in North Carolina. Yes, because that's she. I think she has spent her entire life trying to feel like the person she thinks she should be. In North Carolina, that looked like managing the Dirty South stores, driving an Escalade, and owning a giant home. She doesn't have that in Colorado. What she had in Colorado was driving to Aurora every day to man phones at a child hospital or whatever children's hospital no i don't know where she was <laughs> that's in a row and um, she didn't like it so she right. found something else that made her feel like she was the yeah. person she wanted to be and she had the life she wanted to have and i give that's that a, kudos i'm wondering here with thrive was she thriving well in she terms of money be, yeah no she appeared no. to be thriving that's what i'm asking no was she thriving with money no. So her whole confidence and everything is just based on being comfortable in front of the camera, basically. And I, she loved. Or maybe she's she a narcissistic put, yes. enough that she's convinced herself. She's, she talks about how she's, she's it fundamentally she changing the lives of other people through providing them these products. And she does videos that are 30 minutes long and people on the other side of the camera are commenting back to her. And she, I think she truly felt that in that moment she was how many people were some watching some celebrity them? version like of herself 50? i don't know probably less than 50 <laughs> but she would like invite her parents and her parents would watch and her kids would be there and you know i don't like a lot of people so for me to say this woman is a narcissist no 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 but i found yeah. her endearing in video form either she wasn't that bad of a person or you can lie and be whoever you want you know what I mean? It both can be true at the same time. I'll tell you, though, your story so far, outside of the narcissistic weird shit she's pulling with Chris's family and her weird dominancy over him, like their roles are switched from the traditional husband-wife roles in the household. Yeah. Um, whereas Chris actually has a real job. She's trying um <laughs> outside of that everything's reminding me of a great halloween movie 
Edward Scissorhands. Like oh. they've moved into this little because we we also the neighborhood that they're in. She bought. They, she, they were. Oh, I'm pretty sure they're the first owners of that home. I think they bought it uh, new build. Um, if not, they were the second owner well, very quickly. Chris after is the only one built. who bought it because he was on the the mortgage. She wasn't. Right. Um, and so yeah, they're in these. You know, all the houses look the same, little neighborhood, and she's got the. <laughs> what is the Avon calling? Avon, yes. Avon calling. <laughs> I love that movie. I would just say line from it all night if you want um, me. So it, let's continue. <laughs> but isn't that like uh, like somewhere in that neighborhood in Edward Scissorhands um, is Shanann Watts as well. Mm-hmm. Trying to sell everything. And it's now with social media. Yes. Now the Thrive products also seem to transform Shanann physically. She lost weight, and according to her, she was no longer in pain, which is a symptom of fibromyalgia, nor did she need her lupus medication any longer. Are you... Is there any chance she didn't actually have lupus? Um. So there's an entire online world which question whether or not she had lupus, and the biggest reason why is if you have lupus, you shouldn't be able to have children. And she became pregnant three times. I grew up with somebody with lupus. And it's not something that, like, it's it's not something that just goes away completely. Like, w- you have good times and bad times. Like, it will present itself at some point. Well, I will tell you this. There's quite a bit online if you want to look into how the world hates Shanann that they go into. Lupus. There's a whole world of Shanann oh, haters. Oh, dear gosh. Yes. It's, it's Does pretty... everybody start each message with, look, I, I don't think she deserved to die, but... No, they don't. They start messages with, if I were her husband, I would have killed her ages ago. It's really, really terrible. Like, her family, after all was said and done, had to go on the news and be like, leave our family alone great you hated our daughter leave us alone about it but her not having lupus was one thing and i'm not going to go into it but i'm going to acknowledge i know it because people are going to be like she didn't even mention people question when her daughters are young she takes them to a lot of medical appointments munchausen i didn't say it you did now (laughs) shanann actually would make chris a thrive sales representative as well Although she did all the work for him and he absolutely hated it. Imagine you are Chris who had dreams of working with NASCAR and now you work hard in a completely unrelated field to support a wife who regularly belittles you and keeps you from spending time with your family. She then spends the money that you have worked really hard to make in a way that your life has almost come to financial ruin. And on top of that, she now has something that makes her feel really good about herself, and it empowers her even more to be exactly who she wants to be, almost entrenching the bossy, controlling behaviors that she had to begin with. Yeah. I'm going to wait to comment. I have a lot. Well, not a lot, but I definitely have things to say about it. Uh, But I know you've got more story to tell, so I'm not going to keep you from telling it. Now, despite the negative feelings about selling Thrive, Chris would benefit from its use. Chris would go from weighing 245 pounds to weighing a slim 185 pounds. He was 245? He was a big boy. Watch their wedding videos. Oh, really? He... (laughs) Yes. Do you know how tall he is? Because he looks pretty average, like five ten. I in that I did area. not come across Six his foot, maybe but height. I'm just curious because two forty five. He was a, at an average. No, nope, he was height he was chunkerific. Pretty big. He was a big boy. And and when you see him uh, in the videos, he looks good. Yep. Healthy in shape, not like super in shape. Well, he got, I think, in, in, in shape, pretty guy. good shape. And here's again something that I'm going to reference, but we don't really have time to go into. 
at the end, he was taking the vitamins, drinking the shakes. He would wear two of their most kind of extreme patches in terms of weight loss. He would say that he was only sleeping about three hours of night, three hours a night because of these patches that would keep his heart rate beating all day like he was working out, even though he wasn't working out. And I mean, that can't be good for a person. No. The lack of sleep. Lack of sleep. And just like this constant. No, and your your heart shouldn't. <laughs> he was running. He was doing push-ups. Be. He was working out all the time. But he was doing that. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, this company is called Thrive? Um, the product uh, is called Thrive. The company is called Lavelle. Lavelle. Lavelle patches. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> Don't wear that. Three times. <laughs> Now, by September of... Shit, I will get done. Goodness gracious. By September of 2016, Shanann was a 40,000 VIP promoter. Don't know what that means. And was earning trips for her and Chris and the use of a new car. So I think she had a Lexus, which was paid for by the company she was working for. Just like... uh... Is it Avon? Is that the yeah the pink... Oh, that's Mary Kay. Mary Kay. Yeah. Mary Kay will buy you some. Yes. Or give you something yeah because you have to present a certain lifestyle for people to believe you and consume products and put patches on their body pink escalate yeah there you are now despite any additional income the watts continued to outspend whatever they were earning including twenty five thousand dollars a year in tuition for the two girls at the primrose preschool which to chris never made any sense considering shanann worked from home and his daughters were just three and four years old. <laughs> he didn't see a need for them to both attend full-time preschool. It was $500 a week. That's insane. But I totally agree with him. We live in an area where this most is parents, we hate them. Because we, we took that Chris approach Kids don't need to be in preschool. Why don't you just let them be kids? Please let them be kids. But then you get them in a real preschool, kindergarten, and then it's and all everybody else they're right. <laughs> way behind everybody. Now, having children attending such a preschool only boosted the life that Shanann wished to project to the world, despite the reality of their actual financial situation. And if you think I'm exaggerating about Shanann's treatment of her husband, here is a video that she willingly posted to Facebook. Now, to give you some context, Chris is dressed like Santa. He comes in through the front door planning to surprise the girls. Now, the girls are terrified and they want nothing to do with him, but Shanann is going to push on. But you can clearly tell that she's in a bad mood. So we're just hearing the audio of this. Well, they are. I want you to watch it. Yeah, I'll watch it. All right. Ho, ho, ho. Here's Santa. Yes. Where's the phone? On top of your car in the garage? I needed it for pictures. Love him. Oh, this is hard. As one parent. Make it the phone so I can get pictures. Oh, please. Hear it. My husband's a genius. Doesn't listen. Boy, um, that's a short video, but uh, I feel like I got a lot from it. <laughs> uh, not to speak ill of the dead, but I guess I'm going to. Um, she kind of seems like a bitch. Um, yeah. Like just and and the type of bitch. She's not a bitch to everybody, but she's a bitch to her husband, which means she's definitely a bitch to other people, uh, but not everybody. Um, but it's like this subtle, I don't know. Uh, I, I think the thing that gets me the most is that, um, you know, like it didn't seem like that far off of what you see in just marriages in general. Like, we've been married a long time. We know a lot of couples. Um, we've seen uh, wives be bitches to husbands, husbands being assholes to wives, both of them doing it at the same time separately. This type of thing can happen. Like, you expect your husband to be at a certain level of proficiency 
and they're not. Um, and you get kind of angry, you say something, but then you realize later, oh, I was being kind of, you know, I, I shouldn't expect that of them. Yeah. The fact that she recorded all this and put it out there yeah. after tells me she has no recognition of who she's presenting herself to be and how it had to have make how it had to have made him feel because she's saying these things about him as she's walking into the garage so he's not privy to these really kind of demeaning comments he had to watch it on facebook All right presented to family and friends and strangers that she obviously probably would have befriended for the sake of selling Thrive. And he had to like acknowledge right. that my my wife is completely okay with calling me an idiot to the her sphere of influence. Yeah. And that would have had to have sucked. And there he is like trying to do something nice that I guarantee you was her idea with the Santa costume He's got it on. He comes in with the bag. You can tell he's kind of winded because the thing is super hot. And he sits down ready for the kids. And she asks, like, where's the phone? Like, <laughs> you I'd have a looking, phone. <laughs> I'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? You, there's a phone in your hand. Just stop recording. She's like, no, and the take other pictures. phone. I'm sure, you know, it would have gone the other phone, the one I told you I was going to use for the other things. It'd be like, why the fuck do you need two phones? But I also think and, it speaks anyway, to the fact I, that. Maybe he was under the impression that this was a really cute thing for their family to experience mm -hmm. and for his girls to get to see Santa in the comfort of their own home. And then it became very clear in a matter of two seconds that it actually was a photo opportunity for a video that she was intending to post. And the whole thing, you can watch it all. You said it was short. The video itself is really long and it's just kind of cringy. It's just kind of gross. The girls are terrified. She probably should have just, okay. They're not into this. We're not going to traumatize our young children. But by golly, Shanann Watts was going to get her really cute video. Yeah. Well, again, we're just trying to find a why here. And um, and again, here's the deal. Nothing Shanann did warranted what happened to her. No. But not every victim in the world was amazing, kind-hearted, wonderful. No. And if Oftentimes, you want to understand what happens, you have to understand who Shanann was. And there that is, video shows you who Shanann yeah, was. Yeah, and again, both things can be true that she didn't actually deserve it, but there can also be the the other side of it where it's like, did she drive him to break? And, and just I the callousness what we're to looking, other people's feelings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She it's, didn't think that's twice. That's what I mean. It didn't matter to her. He was a prop. So we've got in this world that she was creating. We've got all the stories so far that you've told that and other believe people, you me, I'm going to tell you about how awful Chris Watts was. This yep. first episode. That's why I don't want to shines a light on Shanann too much on it. But right now, from what you're saying, we've got a lot of other witnesses to um, a lot of the shit that Chris had to put up with and what his life was like. And again, we're just looking for what the why like yeah what made him snap was it that he was just going to snap at some point or was he a bow that bent so far tornado volcano i love that you threw in an m, &M reference it's i to it's, be honest i didn't even try that's what i thought of these two forces were going to bring about total yeah. destruction now and it, it's the again it can it's only describes what a bad movie is going to a bad horror thriller that or <laughs> what should be a blockbuster but it's like the c version of it the b version of it um and that i mean really like the fact that this i know we're spending a lot of time talking about it and it is actually pretty fascinating but if you'll just boil it down just to the facts of what happened like it's still very strange that this story gets this much attention because there's not a lot to it. Right. We're talking about three, what, three days that uh, they went it missing. It was such a short period of time. And it was so obvious. And 
You want to know how strange. you go viral in the United States of America? You are a good-looking individual married to a good-looking individual, and you have good-looking kids, and then you do something awful. <laughs> Boy. There you go. Soul on your soul. Perfectly paired with. Tells you how to become famous. <laughs> now, by May of 2018, the Watts family, despite having already filed for bankruptcy once, were once again in dire financial straits. They were many months behind in their mortgage payments, and the HOA of their neighborhood community was actively suing them for unpaid fees. But despite these bleak financial circumstances, Shanann had a surprise for Chris in June of 2018. In another online video, Shanann, wearing a shirt that said, Oops, we did it again, tells her husband that they are expecting another child. So I want you to watch one more video. And I want you to do it with the lens of a man, of a father, who has been told three times that you're having a baby. And you tell me what you see in Chris's response. Okay. I like that shirt. Really? Really? That's awesome. So pink means... That's just the toss. I know. They're just so, the pink is going to be girls? I don't know. That's the chest. That's awesome. Uh, it's the wow oh, at which, the end of that yeah which uh we actually had to cut that off because um computer froze but i did see the end and he does say wow with the kind of just tensey <laughs> grimace upon his face yikes <laughs> And, and actually seeing that face, then you think about the, I thought his reaction was actually pretty good. He was like, yeah, kind of excited. But at the same time, now that I'm thinking about it, dude played that pretty cool. He did until and, the second he thought he had done his job. And then you see this like true glimmer of panic. Like, which right. he's very well trained and you can watch hours of her videos in which he's in the background playing this very like <laughs> husband. <laughs> and so I think he knows what to do when he sees Shanann with a camera. And then you have this like breakthrough moment yeah. where he is like, just a, what? Just a split second the of a French toast. Yikes sort of face. Yeah. Um, I I just don't understand the I I was going to say I don't understand the need to record everything but at the same time here we are that, that we're in the YouTube age um but she's not even like she doesn't have a YouTube channel right like she's not like recording no. the family life this is all for her business yeah and like promoting herself Yes, and then I would argue so, it also just makes her feel fulfilled as an individual. Sure, sure. But at the same time, the like the recording everything you do in life kind of doesn't apply to her in my understanding of what those people that do that, the reason they're doing that, which I actually I do understand because I have three kids and I see them watch other families live their lives. Yeah. And these families have had the camera on for years before they ever make it and then they make it, but they always have like a goal and her goal is just to sell more fucking health shit. Like it's so it's weird. It's weird. The film film that she's getting from kind of such a small thing um, that actually 
I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't equal like, I want to make it, you know, she wants to make it in no, this. No, I think I don't she even think just she wants to be successful. I think she wants to be product. successful, but I also think she wants to like, she just, she wants some likes on her I videos, she, but she doesn't she realize. She garners the attention and the affirmation. I just can't imagine being an introverted, shy spouse and having these most intimate moments recorded and projected to the world. Yeah, yeah. I and, think for Chris, it probably was a very challenging thing. And that's endure. where, like, even his, like... Because then why it's not a special moment. It yeah. It stops being a special moment in between a man and a woman expecting a child. It's Even his, like, uh, the glimmer that you got of like oh, maybe he doesn't feel excited about it i would even that could be misconstrued he could have just been like an awkward like how far how far can i take the way i play in front of the camera but it's also huge news especially on the back of we're probably gonna have to sell our house we're going to have to start living a different lifestyle and now you're telling me we have a baby. You've just put one more thing on my plate as the provider of this family that I'm going to have to account for. Because they literally were at the point where they were going to need to sell their house. They started reaching out to their real estate agent, talking about what do we have to do to list our home, talking about moving to a city where it was less expensive. Like, they're not idiots. Shanann just wanted to ignore <laughs> All of that. And I think in that moment, Chris was like, great. And now I have to do it with you expecting a baby. Like, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, if we're just looking for reasons again, I think it's just another thing that's, it can maybe be a bit much for, someone like Chris where, and again, she posts it like, it's not the greatest video. It's not the most, it's, it's not like one of those videos that go viral and or even close to the viral ones where it's like super excited. It's, it's an interesting one. Yes. Now at this point, after having lost so much weight, Chris Watts was no longer wearing his wedding ring on a daily basis. Chris had also reached a point in his marriage where he was tired of the constant criticism from his wife. Specifically, he was starting to hate the fact that his two young daughters had begun to repeat the words they heard their mom say about him back to him. Oof. The tension in the household was spilling out. Neighbors would report hearing the couple screaming at each other, at one point doing so in the driveway of their own home. There's also a story about Chris one time standing up to Shanann, and it resulted in him being thrown out of the home for the entire night, and he was only allowed back in after groveling apologies the next morning. Wow. So Chris, with his newfound physical appearance and what was becoming a growing resentment towards his life and his wife, found something that made him feel better about himself at work, a young woman named Nicole Kessinger. At the beginning of June, Chris had to reach out to Nicole Kessinger for support with a work issue. Five days after this initial interaction, Chris sent Nicole a follow-up thank you email. From there, it seemed like the two couldn't help but run into each other at various times throughout their work day. Eventually, the couple was texting each other nonstop, Chris using his work phone. On June 22nd that year, so this is 2018, Chris and Shanann took a trip that Thrive paid for to San Diego, California. Shanann's father flew to Colorado to take care of both girls, while Shanann and Chris enjoyed the California sunshine. Upon returning home, Shanann, Bella, and Celeste flew back to North Carolina with Shanann's dad for a six-week summer vacation on the East Coast. Chris would remain in Colorado. After dropping his family off at the airport, Chris immediately met Nicole Kessinger at what was described as a wildlife preserve near North Glen, Colorado, which is where Nicole lived. Now, while Shanann was in North Carolina with her girls, Chris was living the life of a bachelor in Colorado. 
taking his relationship with Nicole from being friendly colleagues to being an intimate couple. In fact, the first time the couple had sex, Chris took out two packets of condoms, one of which was already open. When Nicole questioned him why he needed condoms as a married man, he reportedly told her that Shanann insisted he used a condom because she didn't like the mess. Uh, awkward. Yes. Also, Nicole, why are you asking him why he needs condoms? I also- As a married man, that doesn't mean you can't have babies with other people. I, I also- Or get diseases from other women. Like, what- <laughs> What kind of... Co- so I included that Way to for pick various Chris. reasons. I included it because I think it speaks to who Shanann was. I also, in a it, couple episodes, we're going to talk weird. about how Shanann, or not Shanann, excuse me, how Nicole is going to use her appetite for sex, which compared to Shanann seems pretty da- drastic in terms of how different it was if Shanann is making her husband wear a condom. As a pregnant woman. Oh, yeah, she is pregnant. Yeah. Oh, jeez. God, I feel so sorry for him. <laughs> now, during this five-week affair, Nicole and Chris would visit the Shelby Car Museum, see the new Jurassic World movie, eat at restaurants like the Rusty Bucket, and spend a few nights at the Great oh, Sand Dunes in Alamosa. By the end of this short romance, the couple was professing their love to each other. Well, yeah. It's everything he's not married to. Yes. So from North Carolina, Shanann could tell that something had changed with Chris. She would call. She would text him. But he seemed less than concerned about connecting with his pregnant wife or his two daughters. Shanann's frustration with not being able to reach her husband regularly must, I'm going to give her credit, must have contributed to what happened while in North Carolina between Shanann and her in-laws. So prior to making the trip out east, Shanann sent a list of acceptable foods to both her parents and Chris's parents. Celeste had been diagnosed with a severe allergy to tree nuts, and Shanann wanted to make sure that neither grandparent made food available, which could cause an allergic reaction. Well, one afternoon, Shanann and the girls were visiting the Watts home, so Chris's parents' home. Jamie, Chris's sister, had brought her two kids by to spend time with their cousins. One of Jamie's kids went to the freezer and retrieved some vanilla ice cream for a snack. One source described it as those individual serving cups. And when Shanann saw this, she absolutely lost her mind because that vanilla ice cream could have ex- like included extract from tree nuts. Shanann grabbed both girls and left the Watts' home, screaming about how Chris's mom clearly had tried to kill Cece because she had ice cream in the home that could have been contaminated with Trina extract. She proclaimed loudly that the Watts would never see her girls again. Now, what seems to be interesting about this the f- is there's at Psycho. least one video posted by Shanann in which she feeds Celeste a Thrive Bar. And when you look up the nutritional value of said Thrive Bar, there is a warning that it's, it could be contaminated yeah. with tree nuts. It's made in a facility that has nuts. Yes. Processed through it. And Shanann did not stop at just proclaiming that her mother-in-law tried to kill her daughter. Each day following the incident, Shanann took to Facebook to write long, descriptive rants about how terrible her in-laws were. So by Celeste's birthday party in July, Chris's parents were completely alienated, feeling like they could not attend the birthday festivities. Instead, they chose to send the birthday gifts to Colorado. Shanann would text Chris telling him he needs to address the issue with his parents, angrily proclaiming that she wanted his parents out of his kids' lives forever, while simultaneously sending texts to her friends about how awful it was that her in-laws missed Cece's birthday. One text between Shanann and Chris read, I didn't create the dagger. Your mom and dad are at fault. She then seemingly honestly feels like she was protecting her children from, quote, the evils of the world. And at one point, she even texted, quote, I should get a gold medal for how I handled the situation, end quote. 
Apparently, according to her, she had some choice words for Chris's mom and his stupid dad. And since she didn't say them, did she, she say should, stupid dad. She did. She the stupidity of your dad. She's pretty terrible in these text messages to Chris. She's like, nobody ever calls him out about being stupid, not seeing what Chris's mom was doing. Now, to her friends regarding Chris, she texted, quote, he doesn't have the balls to stand up to his parents, end quote. And then Chris, he would send a placating text message and then just proceed. Chris doesn't have the balls to stand up to his parents. That's what she would send to her friends about him not I'm curious what they think like when she's like his parents are like this like I'm guessing his parents are I don't know I don't know maybe his mom is pretty domineering maybe that's how he took the role of uh, who he became yeah yeah of, of the gimp of the marriage. Right. And, I don't know. Um, you know, I like, don't know. Just because I, I didn't know a lot of this, but just thinking about the videos I've seen of, you know, after everything happens and his demeanor and how he handles himself and all that. And it's perfectly capable dude. Um, definitely good had acting. <laughs> yeah. Um but then you hear about the behind, behind behind the scene life that he's had and it does make me just kind of question like what kind of self-confidence he actually had. Um I don't know. It's it's very very strange so Keep going. I'm still taking everything in. And this is, again, we are not speaking evil. No, or we're not. Bad of we're the not. dead. But, but again, um, but can we there's please people look that at die. the situation for there's what it is? There's people that die and, and they have, haven't necessarily done something to deserve death, but they have contributed but to their actions could the have contributed to the circumstances that, that led they, to their death. They treated a certain way to decide I can't I can't like, and I'm sorry, have there's you no... in living anymore. And I, I'm there's sorry a but control we also issue. Ha- we also live in a country where um divorce between a man and a woman is not favorable towards a man. Yeah. And now knowing a lot of what you said, I'm like, now I'm starting to like think, but maybe he didn't feel another option if he actually wanted to see his kids again. But then that makes me well. Don't get don't get uh, comfortable on Team Chris because I know, this I know, first I'm episode not. is definitely disproportionate you with know presenting what, what kills Shanann as an as an overt narcissist. But Chris will have his have yeah, his day but in podcast court. What kills Chris's like I'm on Chris's side. It's the kids. Yes. Yep. That's... Now, while all this is happening, Chris is happy in Colorado, living his life with freaky Nicole Kessinger. On July 21st, Chris took Nicole to the Bandemir Speedway. See, for Chris, he saw Nicole as somebody who got him, who liked the same things he liked. He would tell others that he could be himself when he was around her, unlike Shanann. For the final week of their six-week trip to North Carolina, Chris flew out to spend it with his family. But this time in North Carolina was strained, to say the least. Shanann chronicled the time, texting her friends about Chris's complete lack of interest in any physical interaction with her. She even questioned whether or not Chris could be having an affair. Chris spent significant time speaking to Nicole on the phone. They would send each other saucy photographs that Chris hid in an app on his phone disguised like a calculator. When pushed, Chris claimed to Shanann that he no longer wanted their unborn child, making Shanann cancel plans she had made for a gender reveal party, which was to take place once the couple were back in Colorado. 
And on top of everything, Shanann seemed to suffer for, from some stomach issues, including nausea, vomiting, and constipation, which was particularly alarming considering the fact that she was pregnant. While in North Carolina, Chris was the only one to attend the Watts family reunion. Shanann still refused to allow her daughters to interact with her paternal grandparents or their family members. While there, Chris spoke openly about wanting a separation from Shanann. And according to members of his family, Chris seemed incredibly optimistic about his future. Now, the four Watts family members would fly back to Colorado together. Once back in Colorado, Shanann and Chris would attend an ultrasound to find out the gender of their child. There, the couple learned they were expecting a son whom they decided to name Nico Lee. Despite what should have been happy news to Chris, a man who always wanted his own son, considering he had a really tight relationship with his father, Chris appeared to feel nothing for the unborn child shown on the ultrasound screen. Then on August 9th, Shanann left the two girls with Chris while she took a business trip for Thrive to Arizona. While Shanann was gone, the relationship between Chris and Nicole continued. On August 11th, Chris hired a babysitter to stay with the girls while he took Kessinger on a dinner date. Spending $68 at the Lazy Dog restaurant, Chris chose to pay with a debit card connected to Chris and Shanann's personal bank account. Lazy Dog? Uh Uh-huh, the one off of I-25. No. No. Not it's our I twenty five. Cute- yes, not the cutesy lazy dog you, that we like to go to. I don't even think that was around then. Yes, I am a hundred percent sure. Really? Yes. I thought that was yeah. Anyway, uh, I I thought it came out. I thought the thing opened like four years ago. No, it's the fancy one. Interesting. Well, it's still one of we have two lazy dogs around here. That's I what think we we're have the lazy people. dog. Sorry, we're boring Sorry. you with this. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We have two lazy dogs around here. I was wondering if it's the one we liked, which is no. the tiny little one, the cutesy one. Yeah. Now, previously, Chris had used gift cards and a work rewards card to pay for dates with Nicole in order to keep his actions hidden from his wife. In using his debit card, Chris knew that his wife would see the transaction and see the transaction she did. After comparing what Chris told her he ordered, which was salmon and a single beer, while out to eat with a friend from work after going to a Rockies game, according to him, to the amount spent, it became clear to Shanann that her husband was not being truthful. All he had to do was add like five more beers on the receipt. No. Yeah, I got like six beers out of Lazy Dog. Got a little crazy because my friend was with me. A lot of people think he did it on purpose. It's like a sneaky. Just to see. No, he wanted his wife to know. Oh. So it was with this knowledge that Shanann returned home during the wee hours of the morning after her flight had been delayed due to weather. Not only did she return home with the confirmed knowledge that her husband was lying to her, but she returned home to a husband who now knew that his wife, after weeks of accusations, finally knew the truth. There was something he was hiding. Now this couple had reached an impasse, and something would have to give. Now for normal couples, this impasse might mean a fight, deciding on a separation, or even resigning themselves to divorce. But not for this couple. This overt narcissist, married to a covert narcissist, their ending would be more akin to what would happen if a tornado did ever meet a volcano. And that end is utter destruction. Will it be the wind (laughs) or the lava? (laughs) You have to make fun of it. (laughs) 